Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome to the new tutorial series of Risk by Pipeline Code. Uh, we are designing this series on the request of some of the users who want us to give a tutorial of Risk by Pipeline Code as we have provided for Risk by Single Cycle Code. So in this series, we are going to carry all the basic concepts of what is pipelining and how we can convert a simple sing single cycle risk by code into a pipeline version of it. And what hazards we are going to face when we do such things and how we are going to provide the solutions. So this is the first video of the series. Uh, uh, we will going to keep on adding the videos as we go further. So without any further delay, let's start with our first uh, video in this uh, <clears throat> so in this video we will just going to carry the basic overview of what is pipelining are and how we can convert the simple device so single code into a pipeline code so let's start with the overview so just uh giving you the basic concept of what is the pipelining so what does pipelining mean that you have some tasks which are happening in a pipeline right so before going to uh dig into the deeper of the pipeline let's uh go with the basic knowledge of the single cycle code. What, how does the single cycle code work? As the name suggests that all the execution, all the operation of the instruction have been performed in a single cycle. Okay, we have already covered what is the clock cycle and how is it represented and how it is generating. So I'm not going into those topics. So basically every execution of particular instruction when executed in a single cycle, that's what we call a single cycle code. As we know, while designing the single cycle code, the uh, latency of the clock cycle we face is during the load word instruction because the load word instruction is the only instruction who occupies all the hardware design in single cycle code, which we have covered in our previous uh, single cycle code series. So you can uh, review that also uh, for the detailed knowledge of that. Uh, so <clears throat> single cycle, right? Okay, so why we use convert our single cycle code into the pipeline? The main question arises there. So while designing, let's say we have what we have designed in a single cycle was a very basic architecture we have designed, but when we go towards the complex designing like multi uh, multi thread designing, your super scalar, your uh, other uh, processors which have higher performance and everything. So in that, if you having the latest uh, execution in a single cycle code, the, the latency of the clock will be x. Uh, according to the uh, the worst uh, uh, instruction which will be taking or executing or uh, using all the hardware you have designed in the uh, processor. So while designing any of the processor, we have keep in mind the three main performance factors, the PPA, the power, performance, and area. So definitely you, you never want a processor which have a least power performance, right? For, have a performance, what say if I can say, that you are designing a very optim uh, optimized processor which can only run on the speed of 10 megahertz. So this is not what we want to achieve as we have the technology has been innovation has been uh, growing rapidly fast. So the speed of the uh, processors and everything is also rapidly increasing. So that's why the main concept of come the pipelining because what this pipeline does that it breaks the task into smaller chunks. So what we have overcome here that we have increased the performance of our processor by reduce uh, making a small chunks of our hardware where each operation perform for a sing, uh, minimum area of the time. So this is how we perform the pipelining. Okay, uh, as you can see here, we have shown a little bit of demonstration that let's suppose in the single cycle processor, the whole instruction has been executing from zero clock cycles to 17, let's say 650 nanoseconds, right? So uh, picosecond, sorry, the time frame here is mentioning picosecond. So the in particular instruction was taking, a single instruction was taking 650 seconds, 650 picoseconds. And then the second uh, instruction start execution is uh, performance execution. We start from 650 uh, uh, picoseconds to uh, further on to th uh, 1350 uh, picoseconds. So this you can see that we have been re uh, what we can say that we have just neglected the time frame of 615 picosecond by doing nothing and just implementing a simple instruction. So what we do in the pipelining that uh, as uh, illustrated in a below example, that we have used the pipelining function to mul uh, execute multiple instruction in that time frame. As you can see that if the single instruction is taking 650 uh, picosecond execution, so in that frame, we have also 
performing multiple second instruction, some operation of the second instruction and some operation of the third instruction as well. So th this is how we have uh, overcome our performance uh, factor and increase our performance, right? Uh, the basic example, if I give a daily life example of this pipelining processor, so let's suppose we have a washing machine, which have three uh, features in it. Uh, it have a washing feature, drying feature, and spinning feature, right? So what if I'm telling you, can, you can just use the washing machine for a single uh, lot of your laundry. It will going to wash it, it will going to spin it, and it will going to dry it. So definitely the one whole operation will going to take more, let's say 10 to 15 minutes. And what if I can say that, okay, let's distribute each task into specific terms. Let's uh, design a washing machine who does the washing separately. There's a spinner and there's a dryer. So what you can do that you can use all of the three of them parallelly to uh, optimize your work. That you can work on three laundry uh, sets at uh, simultaneously rather than just doing on working on the any uh, first laundry set. So this is how uh, we uh, obtain the pipelining features. Uh, just explain to another easy language in Urdu as well. Ke, this example aapki hai, ke aapke paas ek washing machine hai, jiske aapke paas tino features hai, ke aap washing bhi karna chahte hai, spinning karna chahte hai, or drawing bhi karna chahte hai. Right? So agar aapke paas ek hi washing machine hai, jiske hai tino features hai, to aap jab ek laundry ke upar apne kaam kar rahe to definitely wo 15, 10 se 15 minute leh raha hooga, sirf ek lot ko complete karne ke liye. Lekin agar yehi kaam hai, isko divide kar do teen different machines ke andar, so इससे क्या होगा कि आप at a time एक washing भी कर रहे होंगे, एक lot को आप spinning भी कर रहे होंगे और दूसरे lot को आप drying भी कर रहे होंगे। तो at a time आप तीन lots के ऊपर काम कर सकते हैं। तो जहां आपको तीन lot पे काम करने के लिए अगर half an hour required था, तो आप अब शायद twenty minutes के अंदर ही तीनों lots को आप complete कर सकें। तो this is how we reduce the ten seconds uh, uh, latency। ठीक है, आपने ten seconds आपने ten minutes आपने अपने कम कर लिए, अपने work के जिसके so this is uh, the basic overview of the pipelining and that wow, does it, what does it mean by the pipelining and how does it going to affect our performance factor of the process. So this is the basic uh, di block diagram as you can see ke how we are going to convert the simple single cycle process into a pipeline process. Okay, so pipelining means that we are uh, adding some registers into our data part. Okay, the basic content of the registers, again, we, you can go visit our uh, tutorials for very long in which we have covered the register concept in detail. So you can uh, review that. So register is just like uh, saving something into them. So what definitely when you are uh, breaking a task into multiple tasks, so you have to save the result of the previous so it can be used for the next task, right? Let's uh, just I give the example of the washing machine. If you are just wash the clothes, you have to uh, keep those clothes uh, to keep for uh, make them go forward towards the drive. What if I just re uh, make a new lot and put it in the drive? That is not going to work because I haven't washed that clothes, right? So this is the same have, have been done in the computer architecture that we have to save the previous result to some type of register so that we can use them to next cycle. Whereas the previous cycle, your previous hardware can work on the new data which we are going to provide them. So this is how what uh, we do. What we do that we have just uh, break the sum of the hardware into chunks. Let's say that this is, uh, we have uh, reduced the max PC counter and instruction memory and the PC plus four uh, adder into one of the chunk into one part. And we have introduced a one of the register which we have called instruction fetch register. So what we are calling this stage, we are calling this stage a fetch stage. Then we have again make a chunk of the register file extender and break it into a small chunk and by keeping uh, again in, in a, in, including the re next register, which is called a decode register. And we are calling this chunk as a decode part of the process. And then we have again distributed the three hardware, the MUX adder and the AL unit into a small chunk and add the uh, register and forward with it, which we call an execution register. And we are calling this part as an execute cycle. And then again, we have break a data memory into a separate cycle, which we and added a register, which we call a data memory register. And we call that stage into a memory state. And last but not the least, we have uh, uh, separated our mux, write back mux, and we call that a pipeline write back stage. So this is how we have converted our single cycle code, which have uh, there is no single register have been uh, input in between the uh, cycles. We have inputted few four registers and break them into few, five cycles. So this is how we convert a single cycle code to a five five stage pipeline code of six, five architecture.
So first cycle we call a fresh stage, the second is called a deco stage, third is called a execute stage, fourth is called a memory stage, and fifth is called a write back stage. So now you can visualize that initially I will be having I when I first fetch the first instruction. So that only the fetch hardware will be going to operational, right? We, th there will be nothing into deco state, there will be nothing into execute state, nothing will be into memory state, and nothing will be into the write back state. But as I move forward, the, my first instruction will move toward the deco stage, and then I will having an empty hardware, uh, empty execution interface. So what I can do, I can fetch another instruction and start performing on that. So one, the first instruction is in the deco stage. Whereas my the pre new instruction is in the first stage. As I move forward, my deco instruction move to the execution stage. My first instruction coming to the deco stage, and now I'm going to fetch the third instruction. So yeah, now you can see that at that time, I'm performing a three instructions simultaneously. One has been doing execution of the instruction, one is decoding the instruction, and third is uh, fetching the third instruction. As we move forward, if I have the load instruction to definitely go into the memory stage, the second instruction move to the execute stage. The first, third instruction will move to the decode stage, and I will be the fetching the fourth instruction. And then again, moving to the new one cycle, my first instruction will move to the write back stage. Second instruction will come to the memory stage. The third instruction will come to the execution stage. Fourth instruction will become to the decode stage, and the fifth instruction I will be the fetching. So now you can see that initially I just have the first one instruction in the whole pipeline, but as I move forward by one by increasing the clock cycles. Now I have five instruction in my whole pipeline architecture that I am at a time performing on the five instructions simultaneously. One instruction is getting right back. One instruction have a memory uh, stage on it. One mem uh, instruction have been the execute stage. One instruction has been decoding and one instruction has been fetching. So this is how we implement the pipelining uh, uh, concept into our processors. And we have distributed our process into five stages which have been working simultaneously on different instructions with different stages on it. So this will be the whole data part we will be designing in the whole uh, series. Uh, as you can see that definitely uh, the previous uh, diagram I've shown which was without the uh, control signal. So definitely we have to pipeline the control signal as well because we have to keep make sure that the correct control signals have been used for the correct operation or the correct time of the instruction, right? So that's why we are also pipelining the control in, uh, signals one by one as requirement in the particular stage. So definitely we are going to we'll going to do into details of this in by step by step in the for, uh, further future videos. So this is the basic overview and how the pipeline data part will be going to be over look in the end of the implementation. So this is just the basic overview of that. So that is all for today. I hope that it will the uh, make your basic concept of the pipelining clear and stay tuned for the future videos. Thank you very much. Love this.